Welcome back. So middle of the week, I was uh, working with the air tool there just to clean up these tubes um, for this uh, extra engine brace. So I'd already fish mouthed them there, but um, with the little air tool there, um, able to clean them up nicely, and that one still needs to be done so they can fit uh, nicely where they intersect. Um, Brit always says fit equals finish. And also uh, working on the doors here. So this one has now been sprayed in the last round of primer and then a guide coat on there so I can uh, sand it with 320 and this is what it looks like sort of halfway through so coming along nicely and uh, the other one yet to go for that uh, preparation and meanwhile Devin here and also Jeff uh, working on the four plane spar and they're getting sorted out here to bond the bell crank uh, hinge mounts into place so there's eight of those as I showed back in the CAD a little while back and here they're just bonding it in with high sole and they masked off around where it was going to be so they could peel the masking tape back and just leave a nice little uh, um, reveal around the edge and uh, it doesn't take too much to do that and then um, Jeff was going to actually uh, line them up using a straight edge just to make sure they're sorted out and there's, that's exactly what he's doing right here he's taking a straight edge and he has a single Clico in there just to sort of hold them in place and then this allows him to make sure that they're nicely aligned so uh, those will get their little bell cranks in there and then they'll be connecting rods to connect each of them and then another rod coming off of each one that'll uh, be the thing that actuates the actual elevator and here's Dan continuing to work on the electrical stuff and so this is that um, pass through there um, for the positive terminal that goes in the engine compartment so you see he's got a bit of FR4 there he's using kind of as um, an extra insulator there so it doesn't actually touch any of the carbon fiber and there's the uh, other door frame now and that's all or the first one actually all sanded down ready for um, final paint and then this one had to be done so that was pretty much uh, my day Wednesday just basically sanding all day long but it was real nice out so I didn't mind that and uh, here's Jeff uh, just making sure that the different skins fit together nicely so this is um, the skins for the upper and lower of, of the right hand side of the four plane and then you can see the little access panel holes that uh, Devon cut out the other day so um, most of the stuff's fitting together pretty nicely because you know when we did the uh, molds for this we created little joggles and stuff for everything and and it allowed for tape joints so you can see that sort of fitting over each other in the room there just to tape it up and um, make sure it's a, a good bond where they where the two join and here you can see we've uh, quickly thrown together some walls from our oven and made a makeshift paint booth and very rudimentary no dust thing whatever but you know just the best we can mainly for the lighting really and so um, here's Jeff with the paint we're using this stuff um, from tractor supply which is a uh, sort of like a two-part paint that really dries super hard and you can't really see it there but it's actually a light gray and uh, it um, you know puts a really nice finish out so this is what it looks like um, after it's come out and there you can kind of see the light grey and the pink obviously is just the leftover from the guide coat and that'll all come off with the um, when the last bit of masking is off there so but yeah it came out super good there's a little bit of dust marks and stuff on there because you know we don't have a proper paint booth but boy pretty happy with how they came out because they really looked um, pretty you know awful before at some point um, so uh, good to see that and that's the second one there and now we're on to Friday and I finished uh, fitting that um, extra brace there for the engine mount and you see it's just basically sitting there a little bit of duct tape holding those angle ones but basically it's ready now for Brit to come along and weld that into place and then we'll be able to put those adjustable rods there that anchor it to the uh, um, firewall and meanwhile Dan pulled the brake lines through the keel so there you can see um, the braided lines there the two uh, initial ones the larger ones were for the landing gear that we had before the hydraulic lines and then the other two are the new brake lines pulled through they're a, um, a three gauge and so they'll connect to um, the pass-through um, bulkhead uh, fittings there those blue ones there that go through the forward bulkhead 
and then uh, on the other side um, down by the gear and there's the end there it just needs to have the fitting put on it and then it'll connect to that little right angle coming out of the gear leg and ultimately go down uh, to the brakes on the wheels and this is to show you Dan's little workbench which is probably a little bit tidier than mine um, but uh, still a bit messy but well organized he's got everything there he's getting ready to pull the wiring runs uh, through the keel so these are all the runs that I did a long time ago when I was doing the avionics which is actually yeah about 10 months ago or something 11 months ago um, almost a year actually oh, time flies uh, anyway he's got them all laid out and um, just getting ready to bundle them together so they can go down the appropriate conduits and I believe um, you'll see in a little bit I think he got them all going down one conduit or just two different conduits um, and that was per um, how I had sort of laid it out in the CAD but you know um, it's quite a lot of different wires going down there and for various different things but here you can see he's just testing to make sure it's going to go through the conduits there before he pulls it through and this is how it looks initially a um, little bit of a mess but um, in the process of just getting that uh, organized there into the nice neat bundles the way I kind of had it in the CAD um, but there you can see how everything's just running down pretty much down one conduit there right now and that's all going to be sort of nicely bundled up there and held in place and I also had to do these other brackets for the other end of those rods for the engine mount. So there's all the little templates there. I'm going to be cutting that out of 8th uh, inch uh, 4130. And that's what they look like when they're all done and drilled. So they're ready, just two of those, uh, ready to have Brit weld those up and then they can bolt to the firewall. And at the end of the day on Friday there, Dan had this pretty much uh, uh, sorted out here. and All the runs pulled nicely and uh, sorted out and cleaned up. So once those are all bundled and taped and stuff, it'll be nice and neat, and then they'll be, um, you know, mounted to that forward bulkhead so they don't move around. And then of course it'll be going through the pass-throughs that we haven't drawn yet, and that's what it looks like there going down the keel. So, but that'll all, as I said, be all tied in there nicely. And at the other end here, he's wiring up that uh, little fuse box and relay box that he was working on the other day, and uh, as you can see, he's uh, made a lot of progress. I'm getting that done. He's just putting in the wiring there uh, for right now for the starter um, relay. And uh, that's the one he's just hooking up now. So you can see there's places in there to put um, each of the different uh, relays. And there's also places there for fuses. So we'll be connecting all those in uh, next week and actually hope to be able to just uh, fire the engine up uh, using all that new wiring and stuff, the new runs uh, next week. So there's the other, how the wiring comes through there from the front and uh, that'll just be bundled together a little bit more neatly just to make sure it's not going to move around or whatever but he's just sort of got it in place right now with a few 8 oil clamps and onto the pressurization control I took um, some people's advice there from last weekend and uh, got myself an Arduino so I've been experimenting with this, that as well as well as the Raspberry Pi and I managed to get this one uh, you know reading this pressure sensor as well I also got a little Bluetooth module there that's on the left hand side so that's kind of a transmitting, um, which you'll see in a second. And this is a case that I think I'm going to end up putting this in. I'm not sure yet which device we're going to use. Um, but anyway, probably put it in that case. And so it's waterproof. And uh, here's uh, some of the code that I've been working on there uh, just to get this sort of module running. So it's going to read the four different sensors, uh, two pressure sensors and two temperature sensors, and then decide um, which sensor if any or which uh, valve if any it's going to allow air to come through from the turbo either the hot side or the cold side after the intake um, but there you can see some of the code that are right so actually it's kind of nice to be able to do some code again for this project because it's uh, been like three years since I did any coding um, that I'm used to doing and there's the little terminal there and I've just got it mocked up values right now and that's just showing the values that it'll be picking up from the different sensors and then also the calculated altitude and cabin altitude um, and then over here on the, the iPad, I've got it um, transmitting that data via Bluetooth to this little app. So we'll actually be able to sit in the cabin and see these numbers coming through and also be able to control it from there, be able to tell it what to set the mac maximum cabin pressure to. And we do have um, you know, a more expensive whole pr cabin pressurization system with outflow valves that we'll be using, but this will be nice for controlling the inflow. So anyway, still got more work to do on that, um, but that'll you'll see more on that probably next time or next weekend. But uh, anyway, that's our update for this week, and uh, thanks again for watching, and tune in again uh, on Tuesday and uh, see where we're at.